This has led to a 36% reduction. Yes. But when I watched these pictures, I thought it's not going to be long before someone gets seriously hurt. Do you care? No, I, I think, that, you know, that it's OK to have that view. But the problem with thinking, well, if we don't hurt the criminals, if we mm. back off, not chase them, not physically intervene with them, what we do is we transfer the risk directly from the criminal onto members of the public. Why would you not be sharing my joy that finally something's being done? Uh, Piers, who says I'm not uh, sharing your joy? But I I'm talking as a lawyer. And there's two completely different scenarios here. In the scenario we've just heard, not, not from you, but from the uh, guest in the studio, if the police anticipate someone is about to commit a crime, they are perfectly legally entitled to use reasonable force to prevent that, and that force has got to be proportionate. So they will be entitled to knock that person off. But the majority of cases that we're talking about is post facto, after the offence has been committed, what the, what the police are trying to do is apprehend a suspect. So the offence has already happened. They're entitled to use reasonable force. But what they're doing is actually knocking someone off in pursuit. Uh, first of all, it's dangerous driving because they have no special exemption so that they are deliberately ramming this person. And I'm not saying, I'm not making any comment as to whether the person deserves it. Ambulance chasing lawyers will be encouraging the, these people, who, who you've described as scum, and I'm not mm. making any comment about that, to sue the police for damages for the injuries that they've sustained. Uh, and that they might be quite substantial. Well, we now, know, well, we that, know what, that, those are two quite aspects like, you've like, got. I would quite like to see these little scumbags trying to do that. I'd like to know who they are, because the, the thing that they do, they operate in but, complete... And on, but hang on, let me finish. They operate in, with impunity, with the anonymity of putting these helmets on and driving around terrorising people. They have no number plates often. So they basically operate in a world where no-one can ID them, right? So if they want to come and take legal action because a police uh, car has knocked them off their motorbike, Happy days. Let's find out who they are, let's find out what gangs they operate in, and let's get into these people who are causing terror on a daily basis. Well, that's wishful thinking, Piers, because they don't care. They don't have respect for, for law and order. Uh, people in prison who get injured sue, sue the state. We spend millions and millions of pounds a year paying out compensation to undeserving courses. So, yes, I, I appreciate your reaction, but we're, we're governed by the rule of law, and the fact that they remain anonymous that's a matter for them. The police have to, the police have to comp comply with the rule of law. And what I'm saying is, by deliberately ramming them, to try and apprehend them is unlawful. It's dangerous okay. driving, it's assault, it will leave the door open. And, and the other thing is this, Piers, that you know, in 2016, I think those were the last statistics, 28 people were killed in police pursuits. Two-thirds of those were innocent victims. Mm -hmm. And we're told that people as young as 10 are driving these mopeds, committing these offences. So I'm not saying they don't deserve it, but what I am saying is, in our society, of which you and I are part of, we have the police and all okay. of us have to behave within the rule David, of law. David, the fact of the matter is, the police have to operate within the law of as they well do. as of course they all do. of us. What we've got to remember is that there are 25,000 people a year who are being robbed by these people. Mm. And if it, what led us here from 2013, when, when we, criminals knew that we weren't going to pursue them, they knew that we weren't going to knock them off, that's what led us from a few thousand crimes to 25,000 victims. And this sort of action has uh, caused a reduction of 11,000 crimes. And the police are within the law, otherwise they wouldn't be doing it. Right. And I don't think the argument of the police are going to be sued is a good argument against it. OK, David Vidacek, thanks very much indeed. Nick Freeman, thank you as well.